Next thing that I wanted to show you is the car polish in action and again like in part one already mentioned this is a rough car polish and this is a very fine car polish and normally the rough car polish is used for removing scratches on a paint job on a car and after you've um, removed the scratches or treated the paint job with the rough one um, yeah you use the very fine car polish to remove some of the scratches that were made or that happened while you worked on a, on the paint job with the rough one and in the end with the very fine one you get a very good slash perfect finish on a car and I'm gonna use it mostly to remove scratches on all kinds of stuff uh, in terms of video games so I'm gonna use it in this video and I'll show you in this video that I use it on plastic game cases or plastic game boxes then also on displays of handheld systems and handheld games or tabletop games and also in some cases I use it also on the cases of handheld systems or handheld games and I also going to talk a little bit about scratches on video game systems but yeah those are the three categories that I wanted to show you so first one that I'm gonna show you next is that I try to remove scratches on plastic game cases and also like I mentioned in the previous part uh, also gonna show you how to remove uh, some of the damage on this one right here I did this on purpose where I applied some of the silicon remover and yeah it attacked the the plastic so this one is damaged and I wanted to show you how you can remove it easily or most of the part easily with the car polish and also like mentioned before I'm gonna try to remove scratches from uh, yeah, plastic game cases and some people would raise the question why do I use car polish uh, instead of plastic polishes because uh, most of the stuff that I'm gonna polish in this video uh, yeah those things are out of plastic and in the end plastic polish was made for plastics and the main reason why I use the car polish is because I have a lot of experience with car polishes and I've used them like I also mentioned in part one in my very first job as a car painter and the main reason why I use the car polish in the end is because I've made some experiences with plastic polishes and yeah the those experiences weren't great at all because uh, I've used some plastic polishes in the past and the results that I got from the plastic polish were between not that great and horrible because uh, I also bought some plastic polishes for instance in electronic stores and also in some of those uh, cell phone stores where you can use those plastic polishes to polish displays of cell phones and yeah in the end the, the results I mean one of those plastic polishes uh, the result was horrible because in the end I had more scratches after I polished the plastic than I had before and also the other polishes that I used so far weren't great at all but I know that uh, there are some plastic polishes out there which will have the same results that I have with the car polish and some are maybe even better so the, the final results would be a lot better than uh, the results that I will get with the car polish but in the end yeah I, I don't have the need and I actually don't have the time to uh, buy more of those plastic polishes and try to find the right one because uh, yeah with the car polish I am actually pleased with most of the results that I get and yeah I have this stuff so I actually don't really want to go out there in the wild and hunt for a perfect plastic polish or whatever so this is also one thing that I wanted to mention in this video and one other question that may occur to some people is that why do I actually bother and try to um, yeah 
remove this damage or fix this damage on this game case why don't i just change the top part of this game case with for instance with a brand new uh, empty cdr and uh, yeah the main reason is that in some cases you can actually go that way and uh, yeah you can try to remove it or but let's say you can actually replace them because if we look at the top uh, the top cover of this game and if we would re um, replace it with this one of this brand new CDR CD then yeah you can actually do that and you can also do it with um, yeah with other game cases in some cases uh, yeah you could do it but hardcore collectors for instance would not appreciate it that much because if we take a look at this Neo Geo CD game as you can see on the top right we have the logo of the Neo Geo printed on um, or burned in or whatever uh, into the, the game case so this would be one of those examples where just the replacement of the top part wouldn't be that great uh, at least not for uh, collectors or hardcore collectors and then also in other cases like for instance if we take a look at this one this is a playstation 1 uh, an american game or an ntsc version of the game castlevania symphony of the night for the playstation 1 and yes it also has one of those small um yeah let's call them uh music cd covers and if we would replace it with this one for instance, yes, it would be possible and everything, but also the hardcore collector would see that, um, yeah, on here we have some lines or uh, some larger barriers which hold the manual or the inlay in the case, and on the original one we have only two of those dots. I know for many people uh, they would say that this is uh, yeah, not important or whatever but in the end yeah like I mentioned before for hardcore collectors and collectors who really want just 100% of the original this matters. So those are a couple of reasons why uh, it is useful or wh uh, why the car polish can be useful to repair those game cases and also in some other cases because I have now here the, the PlayStation 1, this NTC version of a PlayStation 1 game. The, in North America, for instance, the PlayStation 1 games were released in those cases, then some of the games were released in those double CD cases, and the very first games, as far as I know, were released in uh, those long box uh, cardboard boxes. And in the end, if you want to replace, for instance, this CD case, then you would need, of course, another game case like this one from another game, maybe also from a PlayStation 1 game, or maybe if you take uh, one of those uh, Sega CD or the excellent Sega Mega CD, because the Sega CD games were released in uh, long plastic boxes, and those were just the North American games or game boxes if we take a look at the Japanese game boxes this is a Japanese PlayStation 1 game and yeah this one is also one of those um, yeah small plastic uh, CD cases then we also have those slightly thicker um, plastic PlayStation 1 cases and they also were released for instance in those um, yeah, plastic CD cases here on the side we have PlayStation 1 printed on there and those were the Japanese versions of the PlayStation 1 and if we take a look at some PAL games which were released in Europe we have those um, PlayStation 1 cases they look a lot similar than the PlayStation 1 um, covers from or game cases from uh, Japan but in the end this is a see-through plastic also with PlayStation 1 printed on it and also some of the PAL games were released in those double CD cases so 
yeah, like I said, you can go the easy way or the easy route. And if you have a lot of those um, cases and you want to get a very nice version of a game, then of course you can change those uh, CD cases and switch them around for all the games that uh, mean a lot to you and uh, some of the games that you don't like that much or that you want to sell or whatever. Uh, yeah, you use the, the damaged cases on them. But at least, in my opinion, I think it's good to know that there is some way or some methods where you can um, refurbish those um, CD cases or game cases and there is a way to remove scratches. Okay, but now let's start with uh, polishing some of the game cases that I have and first I'm gonna show you a little demonstration where I take one of the game cases and I'm going to apply some tape on one side of the game case and use the car polish on the other side so that you can see what kind of improvement you can make on a game case. One thing that I noticed while I was recording all this footage was that it is actually not that easy to show you all the surfaces and it looks also completely different through the camera or on this recorded footage than in real life because in real life you would see more details and you would look slightly different on them so in the end it is actually pretty interesting that uh, yeah in real life it looks a lot different than on the camera and yeah it's also interesting that uh, on the camera I saw some or on this recorded footage I saw some scratches that I haven't seen uh, while I was making this um, this video or recorded this footage and it was also the other way around and on this example you can really good see the difference between the unpolished part and the polished part and yes there are still some scratches also on the polished side but if you're not satisfied with the results you can also try to repeat the process and in many times or in many cases you will also get a better result after you treated the yeah the stuff that you want to polish twice or maybe even three times And now I try to <clears throat> repair the game case of shapeshifters where I damaged uh, yeah, the case on, on purpose with the silicone remover. And first I thought I was going to show you that I try to clean it off first with the goo gone and with this uh, silit bang with the grease remover just to show you that this stain is not just a stain of any kind of fluid so there is really some damage on this case and now I'm gonna treat it with the car polish. Here with the example of IFDB holder you can see in the middle uh, of the game case <clears throat> there are actually a lot of yeah rougher scratches on there so I thought this was also a very good example to show you how the car polish works and you might notice that I used for the most part the, the green 
um, car polish or actually the rough car polish but I also use of course the fine car polish and depending on the condition of the stuff that I wanna uh, polish I can see if I have to use also the, the fine car polish to increase the results or actually to um, remove some light scratches from the rough car polish so it's always or better let's say it always depends on the condition and so on And now that I've polished the front side of the cover, I noticed that there was something that, yeah, didn't look right or actually it looked like there are some stains on the other side of the game case. Or but let's say there is, yeah, there are some stains on the manual and yeah, so I opened up the game case and I took the manual out and I noticed there are actually some stains so I cleaned the manual and I also polished the inside of the game case and yeah while it was open I also decided to clean the CD and after I was finished with polishing the inside of the game case and also the manual I applied again the, the very fine car polish also on the outside and I cleaned slash polished also again the outside of the casing so that I can show you the final results and now it actually looks very very nice there are no stains anymore and yeah for the most part all the rough scratches are gone and it looks pretty awesome now Now here with the next one with Wing Commander 3 you might notice there are a lot of light scratches on there and also a couple of rough scratches and this was one of the uh, examples where I thought I also used the Mr. Clean, the Magic Eraser just as a replacement of a very fine sandpaper so first I treated it with the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and then I used the rough car polish and afterwards I used the very fine car polish just to remove a lot of those very light scratches. And now the final result looks pretty good. There's still a yeah, pretty rough scratch on the top left side and yeah maybe if I would go over it one or maybe two times again with the, the magic eraser uh, yeah maybe it would be I would be able to remove the scratch but for now I actually was satisfied with the result so another game case that was improved actually a lot in terms of the condition and now the final game case that I tried to uh, polish is this one Wing Commander for the Sega CD and there are a lot of light scratches on there and there's also a pretty rough scratch on this on the right side of the game case <clears throat> that I show you here right now and uh, also one thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, a lot of things that look like especially on this example that look like light scratches are actually reflections of the, the manual from the game so uh, yeah again if you look through the camera or watch this recorded footage it looks a lot different than if you look at this game case in real life and now it actually looks pretty nice Again, you can see a lot of reflections from the manual and they look like very light scratches, but yeah, again, this is just the manual that is reflected and I was pretty surprised that I was able to remove this, uh, yeah, this rough scratch on the right side, so I was pretty pleased with the result and I think it looks very good afterwards. Next I'm gonna show you that you can use car polishes to refurbish or to improve screens slash displays of handheld games, tabletop games and also handheld video game systems. Like for instance I'll try to improve 
this display or to remove a couple of scratches, hopefully a lot of scratches from this Atari Lynx Model 2. Yeah, if you can see it, and if the camera starts to focus a little bit better. This is one of those uh, screens that I'm going to polish in this video. Then also one other one is I will try to polish and increase the condition of this Game Boy camera, please focus. Now finally it focuses. There are also a couple of scratches. And yeah, like before with all those um, plastic game boxes or CD cases or whatever. You can't remove all of the scratches, so don't expect any miracles while I try to polish all those displays. And also there are a couple things that you have to keep in mind. The very first thing is that, for instance, if you try to polish a display of a tabletop game, like this one for instance, Tron from Tommy, um, make sure that you don't use the polish on those printings because, like I just already mentioned, those are just printings that are printed on to the display and if you would use the, the polish on those printings you would actually remove them. So if I would try to polish this display for instance I would use the, uh, sorry, I would use the tape to tape the outsides of those printings and then I would um, polish the display and afterwards I would remove them and this is a tape that has a very weak adhesive so this is also one thing that I would recommend if you tape up those printings that you use a very uh, a tape with a very weak uh, adhesive because if you use one with a strong adhesive you can also end up damaging those textures or printings because of the strong adhesive. So this is one thing that I wanted to mention that you would have to keep in mind. One other thing is for instance if you would try to polish one of those displays of a Game and Watch game is that you don't apply the, um, the car polish or any other polish directly onto it and then start to polish it because those LCD screens inside those Game & Watch games they are very sensitive and you might end up damaging those because you would maybe apply too much pressure. So what I would recommend is that if you would try to polish a Game & Watch game that you would disassemble it and then you would also um, notice that the screen of one of those Game & Watch games um, consists out of three parts. You have inside the LCD screen, then on top of it you have a, a one layer or you have one plastic. This plastic helps with the contrast so that the contrast uh, of all those details in the game uh, are more visible and on top of it you have another sheet, uh, another plastic part or a plastic sheet which is this outside part here and this one actually protects the display. So in the end, like I said before, it would be a lot better if you would disassemble this handheld game and then use the polish directly on this top sheet so that you don't um, damage the LCD screen, for instance, while you try to polish um, yeah, the display. And yeah, there's also one that I'm gonna show you later on, and actually this one has a very, or a couple of deep scratches, so I don't expect that, yeah, in the end I don't expect a very great uh, result or anything, but yeah, let's see what happens later on. Then there are of course some other handheld games like this one for instance. Uh, on here you don't actually have the, the same problems like, like with the Game & Watch game. I mean also this one um, is pretty soft. This plastic around the LCD screen is pretty soft but you don't have to disassemble those units because you would have to apply a lot of pressure to really go down on the LCD screen and damage anything. But one thing that I've uh, also noticed 
since I've um, tried to polish a couple of those games is that those um, plastics on those displays, especially on those Tiger electronic handheld games, they are thin and soft and the polish doesn't work that great on those games. But in the end I'm also going to polish this display and yeah, let's see what we get or what result we can get out of this <clears throat> project. Almost the same thing I, I guess will happen with this one. I also try to polish this one, it's also pretty scratched, the Die Hard uh, handheld game that you might notice from my Die Hard review, which I uploaded a long, long time ago. So those are also some things that uh, I wanted to mention. It always depends on the plastic and yeah, actually also on the polish, how good the, the how good those polishes will work on those plastics. And one other thing that I've actually <laughs> learned a couple of days ago the hard way um, is that yeah, in some cases you can actually damage the display of a handheld game, tabletop game or also a handheld system. And I damaged one of my displays of one of my uh, Game Gear uh, video game systems. This is my working Game Gear and this one actually is in a very good condition. I mean the display has some very light scratches, no nothing to worry of or uh, that I would really want it to improve. But I also have another Game Gear that is for the most part dead. This one right here, this one, uh, yeah, all the capacitors uh, would need some replacement in this unit because the sound is, I guess it's actually completely dead or almost dead. Then also the brightness, uh, yeah, it's a black screen if you uh, power it on and also it has some issues with the battery compartment. A lot of contacts, uh, contacts are rusted and so on and so on. But it also has a couple of scratches and I've used the, the car polish and yeah, you can see some damage because what I didn't expect it was that Sega um, printed all those textures on the top part of the display. And this was something that surprised me because, uh, yeah, you can't you can't feel uh, any um, you can't feel any height differences because normally if you would only print this, this, uh, those black textures and the Sega logo and Game Gear logo onto the display, you would feel a difference in the height between the um, yeah the see-through or the clear plastic and the plastic which has a printing on it, and it is completely smooth. So what? Sega actually did back in the days was they used the plastic then on top of the plastic they um, yeah they made those printings or they printed those textures onto it and then they applied a couple of layers of clear lacquer to make the complete screen smooth and this was something that I didn't um, yeah that I wouldn't have thought of that Sega would have made those plastics because normally I thought that all those details were back printed onto the plastic which would have made more sense. It would protect the screen and actually all the textures um, better than the version or the method that they used uh, with this front printing. But in the end, this is like I said, this is something that I've learned the hard way. So in the end, if you would try to uh, polish a game gear then i also would recommend that you use some tape and tape the surrounding areas of the, the printed part so that you don't damage those black printings or the sega logo or the game gear logo and if you take a closer look then you can actually see that i've um, yeah made it through the uh, clear lacquer and yeah, also one thing that I just wanted to show you and that I wanted to mention that I also run into some problems sometimes and yeah, if you try to polish like for instance a Sega Game Gear then be very careful and maybe use a tape around the printed areas 
so that you can actually remove some scratches of those displays. Okay, but now I'm gonna start um, yeah, polishing some of the displays of handheld games, tabletop games and displays of handheld video game systems. Now it might not look like a big uh, improvement, but in the end there was some noticeable um, improvement on the die-hard display. If I would have to uh, put it in numbers or percents, I would say that I improved the display for about 30%, maybe 35 so it was noticeable. But yeah, I didn't have high hopes. Uh, right from the beginning of those uh, displays and yeah next we have this Mortal Kombat one from Tiger and yeah it's the same thing because of the the plastic that they used for uh, for the display it is very thin and very flexible and from my experience throughout the years uh, you can improve those but it's not going to be a, a major improvement and yeah, here I, sh I show you the results and you might not notice it, but also on this one there, there was some increase in terms of the quality or let's say in terms of removing scratches. Not that major anything, I would say I improved this display about yeah, for 15% or maybe even 10%, so there was some improvement but not a major one. Yeah, and next we come to the Atari Lynx, the display, and uh, yeah, I thought I'm gonna save us all some time. In the end, uh, it didn't help polishing the, the display, so this is how it looks before. And now you can see how it looks afterwards, and there was actually no improvement at all. So the Atari Lynx Model 2 trying to polish the display was actually a fail. But yeah, like I also mentioned before, you can't win every time and it was also the same thing with the, the display of my Nintendo Game Boy. It had scratches before, I used the car polish and yeah, afterwards, this is how it looked afterwards, uh, all the scratches are still there, so it also didn't help. Uh, just using the car polish. Maybe if I would have tried it first with a very fine sandpaper, sanded those displays and then used the car polish, maybe the results were better. But in the end I wasn't able to increase the quality of those displays of the Atari Lynx Model 2 and my Nintendo Game Boy. So both of those um, yeah, display polishings were a fail, sadly. But now I try to polish the display of my Astro Command from Gammatronic and actually those big displays on tabletop games for the most part if I get uh, some of those tabletop games they are pretty rough uh, or better say they have pretty rough scratches on them and it's uh, for the most part hard to remove any of those scratches especially if they are pretty deep. <coughs> But in the end, like you can see, I was able to remove a lot of the scratches. Of course, the, the very big scratches like the one on the right are still there. And uh, yeah, if they are too deep, it is actually almost impossible to remove those, especially if you only use the car polish. But in the end, I'm actually pleased with the results. It now looks a lot better than before. And 
we come to the next tabletop game, or well, let's say display of a tabletop game. And here we have Dracula House. This was also very hard to show you the, the, the scratches or actually how it, uh, in which condition the display is before I try to polish it. And this is also one of those where you have to be uh, careful if you polish the display that you stay inside of the see-through plastic and don't, um, yeah, don't go over all the the details on um, around the display because they are all printed on there and you can actually remove them with the car polish or with any kind of polish or a sandpaper. So there you have to be really careful and yeah, here we have the results. Again, there are some scratches on there, some deeper scratches are still on there and maybe I could remove them if I would go over this display one or two times again, only with the car polish. But I also thought, at least for now, for this video, the, the results are actually pretty noticeable. And yeah, I was actually pretty pleased for right now with the results. And now we come to the Game and Watch game Octopus. And I also mentioned before that first I have to open up the Game and Watch, the handheld game, to remove the plastic that is scratched. And a funny thing, I don't know if I didn't remember it correctly because uh, previously I said that uh, the top one is only for um, protecting the screen for, uh, from scratches. And yeah, here you can see if the camera focuses correctly. Okay, now you can see there are actually some very rough scratches. But in the end, this is also the plastic that helps with the contrast. And underneath you have a see-through plastic where all the details are for the background of the game. And underneath that you have the, um, the LCD display. So I'm not sure if I just didn't remember it correctly because I said it the other way around previously, but in the end, at least with the uh, example of Octopus, the top plastic is actually the one that helps the contrast. And since I also had it uh, disassembled, I cleaned the front part of this Game & Watch handheld game with Silas Bang, and I also cleaned the contacts of the buttons on the circuit board of the, the handheld game with the isopropanol and with a Q-tip and also the buttons with a little bit of silly bang and also with the isopropanol and then I've polished the display or the plastic of the display with the car polish and now the results look actually pretty good yes there are still some uh, scratches on the top right side but I was actually very impressed that I was able to remove almost completely the big scratch on the middle of the screen so I thought I yeah just leave it as it is right now. And after I've put everything back together, you can actually hardly see the scratches on the top right. Yes, they are still there, but for the most part it looks very good. And I was very excited that I've got this very nice result just with the car polish and I was yeah, pretty pleased with the results. This is very awesome that I was able to remove this very big scratch in the middle of the screen. So yeah, pretty cool.
So and now we come to the last category and that uh, is yeah that I try to show you how to remove scratches from cases of handheld games, tabletop games and also of stationary uh, video game consoles. So this is one of the examples that I'm gonna um, yeah polish and show you that you can remove scratches on on the casing of uh, one of those handheld games. This was the Mortal Kombat one where I also tried to refurbish the display, which didn't work that well at all, but in the end, yes, we, I improved it a little bit. But in the end, on the back, as you can see, there are a lot of scratches and I'm also gonna use the uh, car polish on this one. Then one other one that I'm gonna show you or uh, yeah one other example that I want to show you is this one you might remember it from my uh, electronics uh, electronic handheld and tabletop videos this was the one that was broken and also the casing on this one has a lot of scratches and what I'm gonna do on this one is that I tape up one side and um, I'm gonna treat one side only with the car polish and show you the improvement on this side and then I'm gonna tape up this section and I'm gonna use the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser first on this one and then I'm gonna treat it with the car polish and then you can see the difference if there is a difference at all um, of both of those um, yeah polished parts <clears throat> and the reason why I'm gonna use the, the Mr. Clean again is because it's kind of a replacement for uh, sandpaper because normally if you try to remove scratches on let's say on a car on a paint job and you try to polish those sections instead of giving it a new paint job and you have a little scratch on there then you would also try to remove the scratch with a sandpaper normally with a grid of 2000 to remove those scratches and afterwards you would treat it with the car polish to remove all those scratches of the of this very fine sandpaper so this is also one thing that i'm going to do in this video and also uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you also have to be careful not to try to polish every uh, casing slash every part of a handheld or a tabletop game because if we take a look on this one this was the Astro Command from Gammatronic which I also um, polished the display and if we take a look on the side this is uh, this casing right here has a gray color and this is the original color of the plastic same thing like with the black one but if we take a look at this frame uh, the silver frame here if you if we take a closer look it looks like this was some kind of a sticker and the black down here is kind of painted on to the sticker because if we look at the writing of Astro Command and Gammatronic then you might see that uh, yeah it has the same metal look like the frame on the side and if we take a look at this um, yeah scratch then you notice that underneath it has the original black plastic color so in the end if there would be a scratch on here and I would try to polish this scratch uh, I may end up damaging this sticker especially also if we have a scratch down here and we would try to remove it slash uh, repair it with the car polish then we would easily go through this black paint and uh, yeah make the silver uh, color visible on the treated part so this is one thing that also uh, yeah you would have to keep in mind and here I have another example this uh, Galaxy 2 I also showed this in my ele um, electronic handheld and tabletop video and here if we take a look at the side this plastic has a silver color but if we look at one of those edges that, then you can see that this section is actually damaged and underneath we can see that it has a gray color so in the end the, the uh, color of the plastic 
is gray and on top of it they painted it with a silver color so if I would try to remove a scratch like here I don't know if you can see it but here's a scratch and if I would try to polish this section then yeah I would also damage the paint job on this plastic and I, I guess I would easily would uh, yeah work my way through the silver color before I would actually remove the scratch. So this is one thing that you have to keep in mind if you try to polish handheld or tabletop games that you have to be careful. And now to the um, yeah stationary video game systems like for instance I have here my very first FAT uh, PlayStation 2. This was the first model that was released and this is also the first one that I bought back in the days of the PlayStation 2. And this is one of those systems in my collection which is very important for me because for a long time this console right here uh, yeah, was powered on almost 24-7 for a long period of time because this was also my very first DVD player like I guess also for many other gamers and other peoples out there. And yeah, also because uh, me and my fiance we played a lot of games on this system and only recently a couple months ago I replaced the laser inside this model because it stopped working and it would not uh, yeah would not read discs or anything and in the end we've used this system so many hours so in the end it was okay that the the laser went bad but in the end this model also has a lot of scratches if we look on the top of the system as you can see the the scratches aren't that deep at all but in the end it also has a lot of scratches and also what I wanted to show you is that if we look uh, sorry if we look at the surface of this gaming console of the casing you will see that it has a structure on the surface and almost all video game systems and also handheld systems um, the casings all or almost all of them have a structured surface for handhelds is for the most part because you don't have uh, you don't leave fingerprints or anything on those systems so they look nicer over a, a longer period of time instead of a shiny surface and I guess this is the same thing why um, yeah, developers of video game systems made their consoles with a textured structure. Only two video game systems come to mind which don't have a structured surface uh, at, le at least that I can think of right now and one would be the first model of the PlayStation 3 and the Nintendo Wii but I'm sure there are also some other video game systems which don't have a structured surface but in the end the problem with a structured surface uh, and scratches is that like I mentioned before normally to remove a scratch on a surface would be to sand it down with some kind of a sandpaper or yeah, a replacement sandpaper or anything like, for instance, the Mr. Clean. And if I would try to sand down or remove this scratch with the sandpaper, I would also destroy the structure of this surface. And in the end, if I remove this scratch, we would have a shiny spot right here if I remove, for instance, this uh, scratch right here. And it's also the same thing with the car polish because basically they both work almost the same way. So I would not recommend that you try to send away any of those scratches. I would leave them on there. The only thing that I would do is to clean the surfaces and in this case right here with the PlayStation 2 I would apply the WD-40 because uh, yeah, it gives it a very nice shiny uh, finish and I would actually leave it alone. But just to show you how uh, it would look if I would replace or try to fix some of those scratches. Also on the bottom right here we have some scratches, some light scratches and over here we have actually a pretty deep scratch it's not too bad or anything but you can see it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna um, use the mr clean 
um, magic eraser on this one and I'm gonna remove this scratch then I'm gonna treat this scratch on this side with the car polish so that you can see how the results are and since it this is the bottom of this console uh, yeah it's uh, normally you would not see it but the top part of the console I'm gonna clean it and I'm only gonna apply some WD-40 to show you how it looks afterwards again the scratches will not go away or anything but I, in my opinion the top side will look a lot better with only the treatment of WD-40 against the bottom part which I'm gonna uh, polish and treat with the Mr. Clean and also gonna use or actually I'm gonna show you one other example this one right here uh, yeah this is a broken Sega Saturn and if we look right here we have a very yeah a very rough scratch so I'm also going to uh, remove this one with the Mr. Clean and then we also have here a scratch I also try to polish away this scratch and here we have another textured surface so that you will see also how it would look on this console and since this one is broken yeah it's also not that important to me or anything so this is the reason why I actually can use it now for this video and uh, more or less damage it in my opinion but in the end I just wanted to show you how it would look like afterwards so in the end you can decide if you wanna remove some scratches with the sand with a sandpaper or with the Mr. Clean or with uh, car polish in the future if you have some scratches on your systems or yeah you leave them alone and in the next video in part 5 I'm going to show you how I clean video game controllers and also I gonna show you how I clean my video game systems. And now you can see the difference between the right side which was polished and yeah still there are some tiny scratches on there but it looks a lot better than the left side which wasn't polished so you can see there is also a way to remove also some scratches from cases of uh, handheld and tabletop games and also yeah video game systems And with this one, uh, with Dracula, I thought I first uh, clean it a little bit with Silit Bang, with the grease remover. And yeah, then I applied the tape on the, on the right side and I only polished the left side with the car polish, first with the rough one and then with the very fine one. And now it's it had a, it has a lot more shine to it, and there are a lot less scratches on there. Again, there are some uh, rougher scratches on there still, but also those look a lot better now than before. And here you can see the difference again between the left and the right sides, the unpolished and the polished part. And now I'm going to apply the tape again and then I'm gonna treat the right side with the Mr. Clean first as a replacement for a very fine uh, sandpaper. Then I'm gonna use the rough 
car polish and then of course the very fine car polish and then I'm gonna show you the final results. now the final results and yeah also the right side looks a lot better and there's also a very deep scratch which also doesn't look that bad anymore there's not really a huge difference between the right or the left side I would say it's a little bit easier with the uh, yeah if you use mr. clean first but in the end it's one step more so yeah you can decide I would recommend if you have some uh, some rougher scratches on a surface that you want to polish that you use first mr. clean or a very fine sandpaper but for the most part you can also just use the car polish So and now on the PlayStation 2 I'm gonna treat this one rough scratch on the bottom side of my PlayStation 2 with only with the Mr. Clean with the Magic Eraser. And yeah, I was able to remove the scratch uh, without completely destroying the surface, but you can really see a very shiny spot there. And like I said before, I in my opinion this doesn't look pretty or anything and uh, for me I think it looks better if you have a, a normal surface, an undamaged surface but some scratches uh, than the other way around. And yeah, here I have treated at least one part of this scratch uh, with the rough car polish and also the surface is not completely damaged but you can also see a very shiny spot and uh, so in the end it is slightly damaged the surface but in the end yeah like I also mentioned a hundred times before everybody has to decide for themselves what they want to do or what they think looks better with scratches without scratches of course everybody wants to have um, yeah his consoles his games his cases or anything look as new as possible but you can't have that every time so now I'm gonna treat only the top side of my PlayStation 2 first I'm gonna clean it with the Silit Bang then I'm gonna apply just some WD-40 and yeah even though it has a lot of scratches on there I think it looks a lot better if the surface if at least the, sur the, the rest of the console the rest of the surface looks even and without any uh, yeah, shiny spots or anything. And for the final <laughs> part, I just thought that, uh, yeah, just for fun, I also treat this uh, Sega Saturn, which is a broken system. Um, I'm gonna remove one of those rough scratches on the right side with the Mr. Clean and one, yeah, one other scratch on the left side which isn't as rough as the other one I'm gonna treat this one with the car polish and first I've cleaned the surface of the Sega Saturn with the Silit Bang but in the end this uh, I haven't cleaned this system before so you will see a lot of dirt especially in those grooves around the system but this was not the, the, the point that I wanted to make or anything this is just that I tried to remove those scratches and I just wanted to show you how it would look like afterwards especially after I've applied the WD-40 so the Sega Saturn example is more or less just a bonus example that I just wanted also to show you <laughs> 